Hello and welcome to this tutorial for Midas uh, GTS Annex. So in this tutorial we'll learn about the 3D Abutment Foundation PAL. So how to model this uh, 3D model into uh, GTS Annex and we'll learn a lot of things about how to evaluate the horizontal displacement for a bridge abutment foundation and the pile stability. So we'll check also the soil structure behavior by uh, which is done by using the pile elements. And I will not use simple beam elements, but uh, I will use pie elements, which are actually embedded in the ground. And I'll show you how to model that in GTS Annex. So in this tutorial, we'll do a stage-by-stage -stage analysis. Uh, we'll first excavate the, the ground, then pose the abutment of the bridge, uh, and construct the embankment, and then apply uh, loading over the embankment. So if I uh, show you a bit the, the details, so this is the cut of uh, the, the model. Uh, so the soil will be composed of three layers of ground. Uh, so you'll have the characteristic of this in the following table here. So you have weathering soil, uh, weather rock, soft rock, and then you have the material for the embankment and the abutment. So the structural materials will be uh, elastic uh, material. Then the salt will be uh, using a more cooler model. And then you have also the, the materials for the pile and foundation. Okay, uh, let's begin with the tutorial by going into GTS Annex. And I will start with uh, the start file. So in this start file, you already have the material uh, defined. So you don't have to define them again. So let's check uh, if you go in the walk tree, uh, materials, you have all the materials I have shown to you, the soft rock, the weather draw, the soil, all that have already been defined, as well as the properties which are going with. And a few geometry are already present in the model. So I will use this geometry to create the 3D model using simple uh, operations. So the first thing I'll do is to extrude these uh, surface to create the ground layers. So I check the direction. Uh, then I enter a lens, so it will be 60 meter. Uh, it will be in Y direction. So you have two coordinate systems. So when you check here the direction, it will always be considered along the global uh, coordinate system. So not the local one which is here, but the global which is here. So if you want to hide the local one, you can click here and you will see only the global one. Okay, I'll check the preview. So it's in the right direction. I click on apply to generate it. Then uh, I'll create the embankment. So I select the three faces for the embankment. I select the direction. So here it will be in minus x direction. So I click and reverse the direction. And it will be 10 meter. You can do a preview. Okay, apply. Now I have to extrude the two faces, the abutment for the bridge and the other, the slab. So here I can select very easily the slab, so I will go into the walk tree. Uh, I'll just click on the plus to see all the geometry parts and I will hide them temporarily. So I can select directly on the screen these two surfaces. Click in the direction. It will be 10 again in Y direction. Okay, so now I created uh, all the solids. So I can show again all that. And I will have to divide the ground to create the three layers. So for that, again, I'll choose extrude. And this time, it's not a surface that I want to select. It's the two lines which are 
here on the surface. So you have to go in this and select edges. So this is a selection tool actually. So all the tools for the selection are here. So I select these two lines. Uh, you have to select direction as well. And here uh, the size of the ground is 60 meter. So I will enter 70, met 70 meter. So the size of this cutting plane need to be a bit longer than the ground. Otherwise you will have some difficulty to cut the solid. So I click on OK to generate this. Now I can simply uh, go on solid, select my solid for the ground and select the tool surface that I will use to divide. You can do the preview. It looks good. Click on OK. And now I have my three solids for the ground. Okay, now the last step to generate the solids. I will generate uh, the other solid for the embankment and I will use the revolve tool for that. So I select this face, rotation axis. So in order to select this small edge which is here, again you have to choose edge in the selection tool. Uh, it will be minus 90 degree. You can do the preview. Looks good. You can apply. Do the same for here. Edge. Preview. OK. And uh, to generate this face of the ground, extrude. Select here. Select the direction. OK. 10. So, okay, to reverse the direction and I click on OK. Okay, now I have my solid models. Now, what I want to do is to, um, to create the sharing face for the analysis. So, for example, you see that these two solids are one in another, so uh, there's no, um, this is a tra tetrahedral shape and this it should be embedded one in another so you can usually just use the boolean operations to do the job but you see it's not the only case you have as well um, the slab which is inside the ground here but maybe you cannot see it here because I have to hide that uh, here in GTS Annex we have a new feature which is very useful and it's called auto connect so it will directly do the job for you you select all the solids you can view, have a preview if you want, and you see that it will create automatically all the sharing surface between the solid parts. So in a few clicks, it's done. So uh, you can show that. So if I hide this part, you see it created automatically the division of this solid inside. Uh, hide again. Same, it created the lines on this border. So uh, when you do the meshing, the, the nodes will be connected. So it's very important to have that in order to be have a successful uh, meshing. So I'll show again all that. Okay, now just before uh, going to the next part, uh, I'll do a bit some uh, cleaning, let's say. So I already defined some sets for all the geometry. So what I will do is just add this solid in the different sets in order to uh, have to clean up a bit because when you have a lot of solids, it's difficult to handle all that. So right click and then you can include, exclude some geometry. So here in the soil set, I will include this three. So afterwards I unselect and you see it has been included in this set. When you created it, it was automatically set in the geometry set one, but uh, it's not Nice, so uh, I'll just include these solids in the, the other sets. Here is the embankment. Oh, I forgot one solid. This one. Okay. Let's also facilitate the meshing to do that. So for the abutment. Okay. The path formation, okay, it's already in the right uh, set. Okay, now I can show all the geometry again. And I can go to the next step. 
So the next step is to do the meshing of all that. So to do the meshing, I'll go into the mesh tab. I go into 3D mesh to generate automatic meshing. And what I will do is simply uh, to select all the parts, uh, except I will unselect these two layers uh, because actually I will use map meshing for these two because they are rec regular rectangles, so it's only faster to use uh, map meshing. And I will use the hybrid mesher to create uh, hybrid mesh, so tetra plus hexa and pyramid mesh. The size will be one. The property uh, I will select. I will, for the moment, I will assign the soft rock property to all the parts, but I will change that right after. So you have several ways to do the meshing. You can either do like that, assign the same property, and then use the, the property function to change the property of the mesh sets, or you can also mesh one by one and assign directly the right property. So I'll see the preview. The size seems okay. I click on apply. So using parallel meshing, the GTS Annex uses the four cores of the computer to generate all the solids. So the part six seems to be the, the ground, so it takes a bit longer to generate. Uh, I'm using a 32 byte computer, so it's a laptop, and it's uh, really slow, so sometimes uh, you'll have the impression that uh, it's a bit slow, but uh, actually I should get a new laptop for that. <laughs> okay, so you have map solid. Now I'll mesh the other two layers of the ground. You see it will be much faster. Okay. Okay, now I can hide the geometry. And I have my uh, model which is meshed. So to do again a bit some order, I can go in the walkthrough and you see you have all the different mesh sets which are here. So to do some order, I'll define the name of these mesh sets and so regroup a bit all that together. So first of all, I'll set directly on screen the mesh sets of the embankment. And I will merge them together. That's to, to be more common afterwards. So right now I can give some names for all the, the mesh set. So this, uh, to change the name you have to press the F2 key of the keyboard. Okay, so this will be the soft rock. Then this will be the weathered rock. This layer is the withering soul. Here we have, uh, I, it's not very clear here because it's hidden. Okay, it's the, the slab. So it is the base slab. Here I have the abutment of the bridge. Uh, oh, I have to fuse. Okay, this this is. I have to merge this together. Okay, so this is the embankment. Okay, now I didn't finish completely the meshing. I have to uh, mesh the piles. So I will hide all the mesh sets and I will activate only the piles. And also uh, the, the slab. So here, okay, the slab here. 
to uh, I'll show you why because I'll assign the gold jing plate to this uh, plate right after but first to match the pal uh, go into 1D um, uh, meshing I will mesh it in one division so it actually uh, I use first I will generate the 1D meshing for these piles then I will create the 3D pile elements so using the interface so it has no uh, influence uh, the number of division you do first using this 1D generation has no influence on okay I will hide this first uh, it has no influence because uh, the piles will be connected uh, directly to the nodes of the ground automatically. So I'll show you that right after. So the pile, I can enter pile for the mesh sets. So you can enter directly the name of the mesh, mesh sets here as well. Okay, so click on OK to create the pile uh, elements. So if you go in the mesh set, you see you can display the nodes, for example. So here you have only two nodes um, because I just created it. And now I'll select PAL, PAL tip to create the, the, PAL, inter the, the PAL elements. So what GTS Annex is doing is that when you create the PAL and PAL tip element, uh, the nodes of the ground which are around the PAL are automatically recognized and uh, the PAL of uh, the nodes of the PAL are already added automatically in function of the ground. So you need, uh, of course, to create the ground before creating the PAL. You cannot create the PAL and then create the ground, otherwise, it will not work. So here, okay, it works. I click on apply. And you see that the nodes are automatically created. So these are the nodes shared by. Uh, now let's create the pile tip. So for that, I select only the nodes here, 20 nodes, and have the property for the pile tip. I click on OK. OK, and all the pile are generated. And activate again all the mesh sets. Now that the meshing is done, what we have to do is to uh, be sure that the right property is assigned to all these mesh sets. So to do that, you can either select the mesh, and if you look here in the property window, you'll have the property which are assigned by each of these mesh sets. So here, all the mesh sets are assigned soft rock, but of course it's not correct. So I'll have to change that. So to do that, you have to go in the Mesh tab, Element, Parameters. And in the Parameters here, you have um, you have 3D Parameter, Change Property. So you can change the property assigned to all the mesh sets. So for example, check the embankment, select the property embankment, click on Apply, and it will be assigned automatically. So I'll do that for all the mesh sets. So base base lab will be assigned from the beginning the weathering salt property and then I'll use change property to change the property to concrete. Uh, this is weathering soil. Okay. Weathered rock. Soft rock. Okay. It's already assigned. Pal. Okay. Uh, now I didn't create the gouging plate, so I'll go. Uh, I'll go again, activate again this uh, to create the gouging plate. So this is uh, if I show you the mesh. This is the base lab. Okay. So in order to assess the member force on the top of this uh, slab, I'll have to create some gouging plate. So to do that, I have to go in Create Elements, Other, uh, Gouging Shell. Here you have to select the parts first, so uh, be sure that the geometry is activated, and select the, the face on which you create the gouging plate. 
So the gouging plate is actually a kind of shell which has no um, no material assigned. It is only a kind of trick to get the member force on the surface of a solid model because you cannot get it from the solid element directly. So uh, send property gouging shell and click on OK. OK, now this gouging shell is uh, generated. You can see like that. OK. We can show all the mesh again. And I'm ready to assign the boundary condition. So first boundary condition to be assigned is the self width. So self width of the ground. So it is walking like so the the factor define the direction so it's by default it's uh, okay. So I'll call it self width. Click on OK and it will be applied directly. Now I'll apply also a pressure at the top of the embankment. So um, I select pressure as load face. Uh, the type of the selection element, so I can select 3D element face for example. Here I will not select one by one, so I have to create the right, use the right view. And Okay, select like that, so it will be applied on this face. Uh, it will be a loading of 100 kilonewton by meter square, and you can preview it, it's in the right direction. And okay, uh, I assign it in the wrong, in the wrong uh, case, so you can change that by editing and here uh, I will call it overpressure and to be automatically added to uh, another case. This is if you want to edit the cases. Okay now the, this is done. Next step is to uh, constrain my model so setting the boundary condition, uh, going to constraint, automatic, so uh, consider all the mesh sets and okay, so this is the condition, the blocking of the ground, so it has been automatically uh, blocked as I want it. I have, still have a boundary condition that I want to assign, it's the one for the pulse because the piles, uh, if I don't block the rotation on the z-axis, you'll have um, uh, you'll have a degree of freedom which will not be uh, blocked, and then it will create some errors during the, the solving, because you need to to constrain all the degree of freedom. So select constraint and go in the advanced tab, click in RZ, uh, RZ. I will give a name for that. I select the pulse, click on OK. Okay, now I've created this um, boundary condition. So all the boundary condition and the loads are, you can view them in the walk tree here. And now uh, last of the boundary condition is to, uh, will be applied to the base slab. Because this base lab needs to uh, change the property of the material and the property during the analysis. So at the beginning, it will be withering soil property before I do the excavation, and then apply it along with the abutment as a concrete material. So uh, for that, you have to use change property. Select on that. So it will be abutment property. Okay, uh, we can give it a name. Change to concrete. Click on OK. OK, 
Okay. Now this is done and I can go to the next step which is to create my uh, construction stages. So for that right click add a construction stage set so it will be a stress simple stress analysis you see that here you have several options if you want to do seepage construction stage or stress seepage slope coupled analysis or consolidation or fully coupled stress seepage so here simple stress click on add I'll click on the construction stage and click on define the construction stage now you have to define the different uh, steps. So the first uh, step will be a foundation step. Here I will have the ground layers, soft rock, weathered rock, soft rock. Drag and drop them in the mouse here to activate them. And don't forget the base lab, at which as the beginning is not excavated. Um, the boundary condition, so here, this is the south width. Um, oh, sorry, not this one, the south width is, but this is the boundary condition, yeah, the, the ground boundary condition, the south width, okay, and in the first step, I'll check this to ch clear the displacement, and then click on save, and new to create the next uh, step. So the next step will is the excavation. So we change the name. Uh, I drag the base lab into the deactivated data. So this will be unactivated. So you can understand it will be excavated. Click on save. Go to the next step. Next step is the construction of the structure. Uh, so it includes the, so I will activate the abutment, the base slab. So I activate again the base slab and the gouging shell. Uh, now I need to activate this change to concrete to be sure that the base lab properties will be changed to concrete. And I can create, to click to save and go to the next construction stage. Next one will be the pose of the embankment. So I have to activate the embankment. Click on save and create the last uh, construction stage which will be the loading. So for this last step I'll activate the overpressure uh, and then I'll activate this analysis control for this step, nonlinear, and it will be a loading that will be uh, applied in five increments. So I want to plot all these five increments. Uh, here you have the convergence criteria that will be used for this nonlinear analysis, and you have some advanced nonlinear setting that uh, if uh, usually it's not required to, to use them, but okay, and save that, close. So you see that I didn't apply the PAL, so this is the first construction stage. Um, I'll just rename it to uh, construction stage, so we sort the PALs. Uh, and modify, okay, and I create a second construction stage, so I'll just copy it, that, I'll uh, change the name, it will be with pal, modify, and it automatically, when you use the copy function, it copy all the properties from the first mesh set that you created, so click on define a CS, so you see it's already like you did for the first one, so the only difference will be in the structure construction. Uh, here I will activate the PALs uh, as well. So here you have to activate the PAL, the PAL tip, and the PAL interface. And don't forget to activate the fix, uh, the rotation of the PAL. 
to be sure that it will converge. Click on save, close, and now we are for two construction stage set. And last thing will be to go in the analysis case to uh, add the 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 case. So it will be construction stage analysis. So first one without the pals. Be sure to select the right construction stage set here. It happens that you choose the, the wrong one, so you may have some surprise after afterwards. Uh, in the analysis control, check the initial stage set, so it will be the first one, the foundation set. And don't check the apply the KO condition because in this model the surface of the ground is not flat, so uh, you don't have to apply the KO. Click on OK, OK, and do the same for the second step. So CS with the pulse construction stage, and here second construction stage set again to the initial uh, stage so foundation one click on ok and ok now my model is uh, ready don't forget to save it ok and you can launch the analysis before launching the analysis be sure that you're using all the power of your computer for the four cores so to do that, go into the option and check uh, analysis and results and check that in the number of processors you are using four processors. If you have four processors in your computer or if you have more, you can define more. If you have a very good graphical card, you can also enable the GPU acceleration so it will be faster. Uh, you have different types of element formulation uh, to be so the analysis will be faster in some cases. So here uh, it's already defined well for my computer. And I can launch the analysis. So just click on solve. And we'll have to wait uh, till we get the solution. So again, I have a computer which is quite slow, um, so it may take, and it's a 32 byte computer, so um, it will be much more faster if you have a 64 byte computer because GTS NX is really optimized for the 64 uh, byte. Now that the analysis is over, let's check the results. So in the walkthrough here, you'll have the results of the first analysis case with all the PALS and the results of the second analysis case with the PALS. So in this tutorial, we want to check mainly the displacement of the ground and the structural elements, the member force of the base lab, and the PAL behavior based on the construction stage step in the wall tree. So let's uh, select the last step of the first subcase and you'll view the final uh, total displacement of the uh, abutment. And if you drag this uh, bar, so the slider, you'll have all the steps from the beginning, so the excavation, the pose of the abutment, the embankment, and then the overloading. So we can check the result for TX, TY, or TZ, and compare with uh, the other an construction stage where the PAL has been applied. So this is TZ. 
So you see, for example, TZ, if you check min and max here, you'll view directly on the model the uh, mix, maximum and minimum displacements. So here, 0 0.139. And for the second subcase, you have 135. Can use also uh, the probe tool to view the result at uh, any point of the model. And here you have also maximum and minimum uh, if you want to add the probes. And if you uh, check the slider, all these uh, will be updated. You can as well extract the result. So from some of the one of the subcases, so first we saw the piles. Um, let's extract the TZ translation uh, at some position of the abutment so here, for example. Or maybe we can extract the maximum position if you just check maximum. Click on table. And uh, then you get the columns for the maximum uh, at each step of the construction and we can directly export this data in Excel or we can also show the graph in the software. So there is a lar larger displacement uh, in the second step when we excavate uh, this part and then we can check also the second subcase for TZ maximum. And we can compare uh, the results. So with the PAL and uh, we saw the PALs. Now, if we want to uh, look at the results inside uh, the, the model, for example, here the TX translation, so uh, the sliding in X direction. We can first make a cutting plane in this uh, direction. Then we can use uh, the 3D, 2D wizard. We can hide or show the points, we will hide them. And now it's possible to uh, use actually the probe tool directly into the cutting plane that we just created. So you can take some points directly uh, in this cut of the model. Now let's check the member force at uh, the bottom of the, the slab. So for that can go in the last step and you have shell element forces so uh, we can check the xx force or the bending moment for example so uh, let's check for example the member force so if you go here uh, and you choose exclude it will automatically hide the other parts that uh, you don't want to show or you have other uh, shading here we cannot see featured hedge okay so here you see uh, the bottom of the, the the slab so this is the x x force the y force can also view uh, the shear force x z now let's look at the bending moment of the piles themselves so uh, for that i have to check the beam element forces and let's check the bending moment in z direction and you can view for 
all the piles in the ground, the bending moment. If you want to uh, adjust the scale of uh, the diagram, you can go in the property uh, window, you select uh, diagram, and here you can play on the scale factor, for example, uh, 0 0.4, and you can decrease like that the scaling. Another result interesting to check is the frictional force at, and the displacement of the pile uh, relatively to the ground. So you can check the friction between the ground and the structure in about two normal directions and tangent directions through the pile element results. So uh, you have to go into pile force for that, pile force, and click on tangential x direction and now you can verify the tangential friction between the pile and the ground. So by showing this uh, displacement friction diagram at each stage you can check whether the ultimate bearing power of the piles is reached or not. So the results show that the ultimate shear force is generated right after the banking and so you can do like that. So this is the construction stage 3, so the pose of the pile. Then you can see the, the minimum and maximum here. Then, so this is the, the pose of the embankment. So the plastic behavior actually occurs when the loads are over the ultimate shear force. You can check also the pile uh, relative displacement here. And here you'll have uh, the relative displacement of the pile and the ground. So it looks like it has similar tendency with the friction, but you can see that even after the appearance of the ultimate bearing power, the displacement uh, still increase. So if you want to draw that uh, in a graph, you can also uh, choose for example the second one, um, pal. Relative displacement, tangential x, let's say check absolute maximum. Okay, and give you a diagram of that. So this is the pile relative displacement and the pile force. Okay. So it's uh, all for this tutorial and thank you very much for watching.